All right, how to deal with energetic or moderately aggressive dogs. Now we got dogs in our kennel system sometimes that are very uh, energetic and, and moderately aggressive. And I know that it can be tough for some of you to deal with these dogs, but the one thing you wanna take away from this video is to um, you know, maintain your emotions. Don't get upset, don't get angry. Don't go in there um, with a chip on your shoulder. If you do, it's gonna be a very challenging time for you. So watch this video and learn. All right, so what I want to do is talk about a little bit what we're doing with the dogs in the kennels and uh, talk about some things that have come up in the past about uh, how to work with the dogs, uh, not only working with them inside the kennels, but also on our walks and stuff like that. I'm going to start with Spartacus here. Spartacus can be a handful. He likes to bite your hands when you're trying to put collars on and that kind of stuff. Um, he's also... Um, a, a nine-month-old, ten-month-old puppy who, who's going through the change of life and becoming a little bit more rambunctious. So we have to make sure and set the rules and make sure that he knows that there's boundaries and things that are supposed to happen. So one of the, the, the biggest misconceptions, I'm going to talk about all the dogs here for just a second, is that when the dogs are barking and kind of going crazy, that the best thing for you to do is to yell and scream at the dogs to shut up. Uh, sometimes when I'm in my office, I'll hear the, the, uh, the kennel help, you know, yelling at the dogs, you know, not necessarily the top of their lungs, but pretty loud, like, shut up, shut up. The problem with that is it doesn't do any good. Uh, the dogs merely think that you're joining in in the barking and the aggression. Uh, what you need to do is come into the kennel area and show them that you are the master of the kennel and tell them in a firm voice and tell them no and then walk in and grab their collar and tell them no, maybe one at a time or personally, that what they're doing at that point is not good. Uh, yelling and screaming really doesn't help. Uh, it only adds to the noise that if you're, uh, you know, we have neighbors and things that are trying to work and people in the front office that are talking on the phone, that just adds to the noise. So uh, it really does you no good to yell and scream at the dog. It only shows that you're frustrated and that you don't know what else to do and yelling and screaming is not usually a, um, a good answer to anything. So as a life lesson, it's not good to yell and scream either. So let's uh, not do that with the dog. So with uh, Spartacus, because he's so um, energetic and so anxious when you come in the kennel, uh, he's excited because he not only wants to go for a walk, but he also wants to have this moment with you uh, to, to have that interaction, to play and that kind of stuff. So um, important thing is to make sure, and now he's kind of got the thing uh, with me, is that he knows he's supposed to be pretty obedient when I come into the kennel. So I want this dog to first be calm as I'm entering. If he starts to jump up and down, you can see his tail's wagging a little bit. He's licking his lips because he's nervous because he knows that I'm not going to put up with his shenanigans. So you may not get that same reaction. He may not show you that respect in the sense that he knows uh, that, uh, you know, that he's supposed to be obedient. And again, licking the lips, yawning, all that kind of stuff is showing uh, that the dog knows that there's something stressful possibly coming up in its life. So uh, I want calm. As I go to put on the kennel, I want the dog to sit. Hey, no, sit, sit. Ah, now you see I was trying to bite my hand um, and we're going to not let him do that. Right? Hey, no. Firm voice again, not yelling and screaming like a banshee. No. Sit. Ah, ah. Come here. Sit. Nice. Nope. So when he does all that stuff, we can back out and then reset. Uh, again, sometimes backing off from a dog that's showing aggression is giving them what they want. But in this case, it's not. But in this case, he, he surely wants to go for a walk. He surely wants to have that interaction with me, but I'm not going to get him the satisfaction of doing that unless he's calm. So now he's sitting and being nice again. Now we'll try it again. Hey, hey, no, no. He has another collar, unfortunately. Sit. Hey, no. No. Good. Nice. Nope, nope. All right. Nope. We'll reset one more time and we'll see if we can keep this short. I don't want to keep going in and out, but I have, I have time on my hand. So if I'm, uh, uh, you know, if I'm here for my couple hour shift, if he tries it a couple times, then just go to the next dog and walk him. All right, you don't have to get in a hurry with trying to get this collar on this dog. But I'm going to give it one more shot to see if I can get him to cooperate. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Nice. Very good. Good. Nice. Ah. Good. Good. Very nice. I want, the, I want this pinch collar to be high, uh, close to the ears, and close to the bottom of the chin. And I would pref prefer the ring uh, to be up near this, this ear or on the back of his neck. All right? Good boy. Nice. Now the good news is, now that I have this on him, if he goes to snap at me and bite at me like he has this tendency to do, I just can grab underneath this chain, I don't know if you can see it, grab this chain, 
And if he goes to do that, I can give him a leash correction very quickly on the pinch collar and tell him no. So there's no need to slap him around the head or push him down or anything like that. If you have a hold of this chain, if he were to go and bite my hand, I can just give him a leash correction and tell him no. Good. Good. Nice. Good job, buddy. Good job. So now I got the pinch collar on. Now I like to reset and come and get a leash. And where's my leash? Oh, I put it down somewhere else. So I get this leash here. So I'll get my leash. And now again, I want to, I'm reinforcing the fact that at this door, I want cooperation. Sit. Uh, no. Sit. So again, we have the pinch collar on and we can grab that chain and help him understand what we want and give him that sit correction. I can go and reach to put the leash on. If he starts to bite my hand, of course, I can give him a leash correction or a, um, a collar correction really quickly. I put it on. That doesn't mean he can come out, so he goes back to the sit. I can get out of the way and have this opening here. If he were to bolt out, I just give him that, that sit correction. And he knows to stay. Nope, sit. Okay, come on. Good boy, nice. Hey. Now we have this other dog in this kennel here. Now the tendency for this dog is to is the, the fight with this dog as he goes out. But we've already had a confrontation earlier today, so now he already knows that this isn't gonna be allowed. So Courtney, if you can come over here on this side. So you can see. No. Nope. Come here, come here, come and visit Renee. So now he's not doing the kennel fighting because earlier, as he was on leash, um, he went to go fight with Renee and he got corrected for doing that. But now he's being very smart. <laughs> he's avoiding that, that situation. Sit, sit, good, nice. So again, we're testing him, we're making sure he understands that that kind of activity, that kind of behavior is not acceptable. Uh, he's no, he knows now. Oh, he thought about it, but he turned his head and that was really good. You see him licking his lips, showing me that he's thinking uh, bad thoughts, so that's why he gets a little bit nervous. So now that we've tested this, now we can walk outside. And this could be part of your walk as the kennel crew. Uh, part of your walk is all these lessons with the dog. Now, you have a choice. You can have the dog at the end of the leash and have him go and sniff and, and pee on bushes and all that kind of stuff. But with Spartacus, I prefer that you guys give um, obedience to this dog on your walk. So he'll be heavy on the obedience where maybe a dog that isn't so fired up and so um, stimulated um, would, uh, you can let that dog be more at the end of the leash and kind of walking around. So we're gonna put Spartacus on a heel. Come on. So as we go for a walk with Spartacus, we're gonna have a more to heel position, which is this right shoulder in line with the left leg. Every so often you can stop so that he sits automatically. Good, pat him on the head, let him know he's being good. Step off with your left foot, that means heel. Good boy. Reinforce he's in a good spot. If you could reach down and touch his head, uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, that's where you want him to be. If you have to reach back, like right here, I can't reach him, so he's not going to get pet. He's going to get corrected. Catch up. <laughs> Again, he's going to want to go to these trees to go pee and stuff like that. Again, we're, uh, we're going to be a little heavy on the obedience with him. And see how he's forward of me? So we're going to slow him down with a correction. Good. Making a bout turn. He comes with me. About turn, again, loose leash, that's the key to obedience. We're not gonna let him go pee on these trees. Number one, because they're our neighbors, but also because uh, we're doing obedience right now. Good, again, I can reach down and pet his head and his back, that's good. If he speeds up, we slow him down, good. We're not gonna let him pee on these bushes, we want obedience. You can throw in an auto, auto sit, sit, sit. Not an auto sit, I'm sorry, a sit in motion. Leave the dog. This is part of your 15 or 30 minute walk, whatever it is you're doing. Good, step off the left foot, means heel. Now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give him a break at this bush over here, so this will be part of his break. And you say, okay, go on, go on, good boy. Nice. So now he can sniff the bush and, and go pee on a tree or whatever he wants. Now he's on his own time. If he has to go poop, maybe he'll go poop, which is cool. Good, nice. Good, he appears to like the camera for some reason. He's a ham. Good boy. Good. 
just like a pet dog, when he goes pee, if he does here, we're gonna tell him he's a good boy, that way he knows that it's a good thing to go to pee while he's on his walk. So we reinforce that. Good, nice, good boy. You can say, uh, take a break if you wanna put a, a name or a, 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 a command to that behavior. Good. Now at some point you wanna get, get back on your heel with this dog. Again, if you have another dog that's not so energetic, you can just let the dog be free for most of the walk. So at this point, I'll tell uh, Spartacus to heal. Spartacus, foos. Nice. Throw down. And we go back on our obedience walk. And throw in a couple of bout turns. Nice. Nice. Down. Or plots, sorry. Plots, good. Leave the dog. Good. This obedience not only is uh, good to reinforce with the dog what he's supposed to be doing, but it's also mental stimulation. So it exercises the dog's brain. So it's always not just about the physical exercise of taking these dogs on the walk with a dog that needs to be obedient and needs to have some control in its life. Uh, it's really good to have this obedience because it really makes their brain start to work. And you'll see the dog, actually sometimes if you've worked them like a dog in obedience, they'll come back panting more more so than a dog that you just let be free on a walk because um, mental stimulation causes more uh, the dog to be more tired than physical stimulation. Good. Nice. Left foot again means heel. About turn. Stop and sit. That's a really crooked sit. <laughs> so you don't want to end on that note. I was going to end the video, but I'm not going to do that. Good boy. Come here. here. All right, well. That's not perfect, but we're gonna let it end on this. So I hope that's a helpful hint on a dog that's like Spartacus. In another video, I'll try to do a walk. It won't be as exciting with a dog that doesn't need obedience. So, uh, all right, thanks for watching. I get one collar, so if this is the one that's off. Oh my goodness. She's all jacked up for some reason. Hold on. If I can get him to start acting up a little bit, I can do another video. So if he wants to bolt out, you know, we just wave the door back and forth. He knows to back out. So you wave it back and forth. This way, yeah. you don't shove it inside the cage. Not always, but I mean, if he's coming at me, I'm going to stop him. Yeah. He'll run into it and that kind of stuff. So I just make sure he's in that seated position. And if he starts moving around, I just stop. Sorry, my butt's in the way. Sit. No, no, no. Sit. No. Sit. Wow. I am impressed. Good boy. You can maneuver around. Oh, and get it in a good place if you want to. Good. So it stays there. And you get whatever relationship you need. And again, the three visits, instead of, you can do all three at once if you want to, but by doing it separately, you're just kind of reinforcing what the behavior is supposed to be. Wow, very impressive. And you get the red button.